Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of August 9th, brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com. I am Winston Smith. Need work? U.S. prisons are hiring. The Department of Fish and Wildlife are peckerheads. Westboro homophobes are at it again. P.E. Nolan is here with a report. Our asshole of the weekend more. First, a quick comment. On the conversation overheard in the back room earlier this week, that's Worldwide Hippie's online meeting place for writers and staff, it seems a few of my co-workers feel my newscasts have been lacking humor lately. These same nameless Diana and Phil individuals want management to enforce, upon yours truly, some silly changes to my newscasts in an effort to gain viewers. I want it to be known right now that no one tells Winston Smith how to do his news program. The day will never come when I, your host, will trade my integrity as a journalist, my commitment to you, the viewer, or my personal ethics, just to stay on the air and have a cheap laugh. I welcome the conversation with management. I say bring it on. You may have some of the writers here thinking twice about what they present to the public and fanny patting you at every meeting, but not Winston Smith. I am my own man, and if management has a problem with that, too bad. Suck it up and live with it. I can always go to CNN. Our top story. According to RT America, the Pentagon is planning on adding 20,000 troops to patrol U.S. streets to protect people in the event of a terrorist attack or during civil unrest. The Pentagon, they are planning for real economic threats to America. Our Eamon Javers has the latest. And in the Army, they're having a very interesting year-long exercise called Unified Quest 2011. And in that wargaming series, they're looking at the implications of large-scale economic breakdown inside the United States that would force the Army to keep, quote, domestic order among civil unrest and force the Army to deal with fragmented global power and drastically lower budgets, this according to the trade publication InsideDefense.com. And this. Westboro homophobes are at it again. They're going to pick at the funeral of those killed in the July 22nd massacre in Norway. The Kansas City-based church, notorious for picketing soldiers' funerals and preaching that God hates fags, issued a press release July 31st saying its members were heading to Norway to let the public know that the Nordic nation was being punished by God. But if Westboro church members actually fly to Odutoya or Oslo, Norway, where the deaths occurred, they might instead find that they are the ones in danger of punishment. Norway has strict codes against hate speech. Any person who willfully or through gross negligence publicly utters a discriminatory or hateful expression shall be liable to fines or imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years. The use of symbols shall also be deemed to be an expression. Any person that aids and abets such an offense shall be liable to the same penalty. So let's see if God can keep the Westboro Church of Fred Phelps out of jail. Or if once Freddie finds out about the law in Norway, he suddenly backs down as most bullies do when confronted by something or someone bigger than they are. No, I'm not speaking about God. I'm talking about the law. And here is P.E. Nolan with her report. You have something else from Norway, don't you, Trish? Hey, Winston. On July the 22nd, when that terrorist opened fire at a summer camp in Norway, two women single-handedly rescued 40 children. Hege Dalen and her spouse, Twirl Hansen, were camping when they heard gunshots and screaming coming from the island. They happened to have this little motorboat with them, jumped right into it, went over and fished 10 kids out of the water took them to safety and returned three more times to pick up kids even though there were bullet holes in their boat and everything um, no major media outlets have reported on this story unless you count this teeny paragraph on Mad Out blog that didn't appear until August 1st by that time the blog 
talk about equality was asking the question, if a married lesbian couple uh, saves 40 teens from the Norway massacre and no one writes about it, did it really happen? A couple of days later, HuffPo and The Guardian uh, ask a similar question, but even now, uh, Google News search returns only 38 results about this story, which is less than the number of children Hege and Toro saved. Um, if Boy Scouts had rescued those kids, you can bet there would have been a satellite track at their campsite within the hour. But uh, there is something rotten in the state of the news from Norway. And if you ask me, it's that the American media is a bunch of corporate chicken shits that are afraid that telling the story of an extraordinary afternoon in the life of two women and 40 kids is somehow going to promote the gay agenda. We can't have that. Back to you, Winston. Thank you, Tricia. And you can see P.E. Nolan each Monday right here on Hippie TV News and Start. Looking for work? U.S. prisons are hiring. The Nation Online is running an expose on the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. Prison labor for the private sector was legally barred for years to avoid unfair competition with private companies. But this has changed thanks to the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. It's Prison Industries Act and a little known federal program known as PI, the Prison Industries Enhancement Certification Program. It's not PI. While much has been written about prison labor in the past several years, these forces, which have driven its expansion, remain largely unknown. So please visit the Nation Online and read this series. You will be shocked and appalled. Here's another example of your tax dollars at work. The Department of Fish and Wildlife is on the case. While at her father's house on June 13th, 11-year-old Skylar Capo rescued a baby woodpecker from being eaten by her cat. I've just always had a love for animals. An avid animal rescuer, Skylar was excited when her mom, Allison, agreed that she could nurse the bird back to health. She was just going to take care of it for a day or two and then let it go. On the way home, they stopped at this Lowe's, bringing the bird inside to shield it from the heat inside the car. Now, once inside the store, a woman confronted them, saying she was from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. What the Capos didn't know was that under the Federal Migratory Bird Act, it's a crime to take or transport a woodpecker. Two weeks later, the Capos got an unexpected visit from the same officer they met at Lowe's, accompanied by a Virginia State Trooper. Although the Capos released the woodpecker, Allison was issued a $535 citation. I feel harassed and I feel angry. Allison refused to take the ticket because she was no longer in possession of the bird. But last week, more than a month after her confrontation with the wildlife officer, she received the fine in the mail. But according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the citation was processed unintentionally and they apologized for the clerical error. This week it goes to the University of Tennessee Bookstore in Knoxville for deciding to stop selling packages of breath mints poking fun at President Obama after a Democratic lawmaker, State Representative Joe Strongarm, I mean Armstrong, complained. The bookstore previously carried breath mints satirizing former President George W. Bush, and they stayed there. Tennessee Republicans were quick to holler hypocrisy, and in this case they were right. State Representative Joe Strongarm for sure was out of the line by complaining, but for removing the mints from the store and in effect censoring free speech, you, the University of Tennessee Bookstore in Knoxville, are worldwide hippies assholes. That's it for this week. Please visit WorldWideHippies.com for our original articles and commentary as well as news updated every two hours. And make a donation or buy a fucking t-shirt to help Worldwide Hippies keep up the howl for peace and justice. And we will see you here next Monday.